Um, a lot happened this week. A lot happened this week. And um, I want to talk about that. And I also want to talk about how you're dealing with it. And what do you think should be done? And all that kind of good stuff. All right. And we had the explosion in, in uh, Texas. The plant uh, blew up. But that's kind of a secondhand thing, even though that's a real serious issue as well. But the, uh, the bombing at the marathon there in uh, Boston, I think that's what's in the forefront of everybody's mind. And I, I, uh, I hate to warn you, but I've been saying for a long time that this is going to happen, and it's going to happen to a greater degree of what has happened already. It's, our lives have changed in this country, whether we realize it or not. How we live, where we go, you know. And, and I'm not telling you to live in fear, but one thing for sure, you need to watch your backs when you're out now. You just can't be out like we used to be able to do partying, and have a good time, have a lunch or at a movie theater and not look around. Our lives have really changed. It's not the same anymore. Now, will we ever get it back to normal? I, I don't know. I don't know, you know, I can't tell the future, but it really has changed. And I'm listening to, and not just in our public life, but in our private lives too, it has changed. And yesterday, I met with, uh, in private, and I, they almost made me raise my right hand and put it on the Bible to promise that I would not mention who I was with, the name of their companies, or anything like that. But I met with some white business people on yesterday in private. It was like going to an FBI meeting or something, you know. <laughs> but it just shows the fear that white Americans have. And I'm not really getting into that, but it's an example of what we're going to talk about. Um, they are having problems in their companies and predominantly with black Americans. And, you know, they have normal issue with other folks, you know, the whites and Hispanics. But they have major problems with their black employees in that the black employees are disrespectful. They don't want to do their work. You get on them about something, they curse you out. They curse the boss out. They, they're not worried about getting fired because they know that they can sue for racism and that the white businesses are going to cave in and pay the money rather than going through an expensive lawsuit. And so the black employees do not care at all. And these people just don't know what to do with themselves. I secretly told them what to do. I can't tell you my secret because... <laughs> but they are, are afraid. And I find that Americans are afraid today. Are afraid, in fear, of one thing or another. And it just, to me, it says that when you have fear like that, whatever it may be of, then you don't believe in God. Because in God, there is absolutely no fear. Whether it's in business or in your private life or in what we got to deal with now, being blown up in a restaurant or running a marathon or at a cafe. I, I said four years ago that we're going to be living the way Israel is living. I went to Israel, and they have uh, military men and women everywhere you go. Just military men and women and policemen everywhere, and these people are heavily armed because they can get blown up on a bus or anywhere. You know how that is over there. That's just like that here now. It really is. It's unfortunate, but we the people have turned our lives over to the government and the government never going to make the right decision or the best decision for you and me and for our country. It's just the way it is. And then the people who are making these, these decisions, they have been posted in every high decision-making position in the country, in government, in business, in churches, in whatever. And they all think alike. They really think alike. And they don't think, they don't think, they don't think about freeing the people up they think about controlling the people. It's weird how that is. I heard a reporter say, uh, this happened to be a black woman who write for one of the major newspapers. She said, 
you know that bomb was, those two bombs that happened in Boston was in a uh, pressure cooker or a cup of pressure cookies, right? Cookers, right? You know about that, right? Yes. I'll tell you, you didn't know? Yeah, they were, they, these guys had put these bombs in a pressure cooker. I asked the same thing at first. <laughs> A pressure cooker. So you, don't, you have a, a maid at your house? You don't cook? Yeah, I cook, but I don't have a pressure cooker. Wow. I would fire my husband if you don't have a pressure cooker. Yeah. <laughs> a pressure cooker is an iron pot. It is iron, right? Iron pot. Pot with a lid on it, right? And you can put your pinto beans in there and just let them take their time and cook all day long. Or whatever, your ham hops. Your ops tell, and you lock it down, right? And it hold it heated. Is that right? Yes. Uh, the lady in the back, you shook your head about that. Robert, I really appreciate you going to the table with the mic. Thank you so much. Whatever she said is said now and done. No, I, I just. I, no, right here with the blue sweater. I'm sorry. Yeah. You don't have, is that what it is? Well, it's not iron. I think oh. it's it could be any material, but oh. the whole point is that you just you seal it shut. Right. And it builds pressure, and then that's how it cooks. Oh, okay. Into, it doesn't have to be iron. Yeah. Okay, you're right about that. Because yeah. iron one is, I think, is a Dutch oven. You have one. Yeah. And you think of the what? No, the iron cast iron. It will be a Dutch oven. Yeah, I think they're generally or often made of aluminum or stainless steel. Oh, okay. If I'm not mistaken, and they cook under pressure and they cook quickly. What that's why they're so everybody likes them so much, except they can blow up. Right. <laughs> and so <laughs> you abuse them. <laughs> so they put the bombs in there so they could get the the most effect from the bomb, the explosion itself. And so this reporter is talking about we need to ban pressure cookers. He's like, no, <laughs> they have the wrong conversation going here. We need to ban guns. We need to ban pressure cooking. Why no one is saying that now? We, and, and I guarantee you, if they keep pushing that, that would be next. Let's ban pressure cookers. And these people, they want more public policies. They want more laws. And I realize when something like this happened, people in fear, and they are willing to take away, allow the government to take away even more of their freedoms because they are now in fear. And it's just mind-blowing. And most of the people seem to be teaching this. And this is not the way to live. It is absolutely not the way to live. But that's what ha this is the direction that our country is, is uh, headed in. And we're going to look around one day when the fear is kind of gone you're not gonna have any freedom. We don't need more public policies. We don't need more laws. How about enforcing the laws that we have? How about shedding the borders down the back door so that people just don't walk in? And how about examining the folks who come through the front door even more so? Because these people came through the front door apparently. How about looking at that and not burying our heads in the sand and pretending that it's something else? The same way in our private lives. When we suffer in our private lives, it's because of something we have done. It's not someone else who did it to us. We did it, just couldn't see the consequences of what we were doing at the time. And so when all hell break loose, the first thing we want to do is blame somebody else. It's your fault. If you had said it or did this, I wouldn't be in this trouble. We put our own selves in trouble. And we need to go back to those principles, but I'm not sure that we can get back now. It seems like so many people have gone the other way with it. And it's really, really time that something great happened to stop this before we look around and America's done. Yes? I was going to say, like, they're trying to ban all guns. Yes. And aren't explosives already banned, but the bad guys are still using them? That's right. Yeah. They're still using them. Homemade them. You can still get them. When you have an evil heart, there's nothing that anyone can stop you from being destructive. It has nothing that anyone can do. That's why God wants us to know ourselves, repent, so that we can have a brand new heart. We need a new spirit. And, and the churches and the lawmakers are not dealing with the spirit. Somebody brought up, hey, why not? Let, let's work with the families. Let's put family back. Oh, no. It's not, you can't go and blame the parents. 
It's not the family. We need new laws. We need new, and I wrote it down, we need new policies. How many policies are we going to have? There's no discussion for the most part. There's some about how about, um, how about uh, enforcing the laws that are already on the book and see if they work or not. No real discussion. They want more laws and more laws and more laws. And then it's interesting, too, in that there's a major group of people out there that don't want to blame the people of color. Apparently, some politicians said that the bomber, when they were on the run, he said they, they were dark-skinned or something like that. And now the folks are mad at him for saying that. If it was white people, they wouldn't have said white skin. Don't say dark skin. That's racist, right? How crazy is this? Evil is having its way. And they don't want the drones to, to blow up people in the Middle East. They don't, because those people are dark skinned. And apparently Obama had a press conference uh, trying to convince the folks to ban the guns. So he used some of the people from uh, uh, Connecticut where they had the shooting at the school. And now the blacks are mad at him because he doesn't use black people in Chicago in a press conference to get guns banned. Why does he use black people? Why, why is always them they go to? I'm like, this is so, this is it's just not real to me anymore. <laughs> It seems like I'm in a, a, a dream. And, and most of the time when these debates are happening, there are no real sound logic in the debate. And it doesn't matter what side of the fence it's coming from, whether it's whatever. You know, people are not really saying the truth. They're not speaking the truth that would bring on a change about what's going on. And it's just mind blowing. And it's, I, I, I want to urge you to draw closer to God because I don't, not that there would not be any change because God can change whatever you want to and it doesn't take many to bring on a change but I don't see any change happening anytime soon the wrong people are in control of everything in this country for the most part when you can convince the churches to go for more public policies you've lost the church too they don't understand the spiritual aspect of what's going on yes sir one thing I noticed um, that uh, reading certain parts of uh, the Bible, it talks about uh, the times that we're living in, and you know to be to be prepared, to be strong, yeah. because times like this are coming. And you know I, I can see it when people will be killing themselves because times will be so 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 treacherous and dangerous. When people are already killing themselves, hardly a day goes by. I think the suicide rate is at a all-time high because people can't deal with issues in their private lives either. And when you're angry about what's going on in your private life, Satan speaks to you and he would make you kill yourself. Oh, it's hopeless. Why be on this earth? Nobody loved me and I don't love nobody. You might well die. Okay, I get a rope and hang myself. He can convince you to do that. So that's already through the room, but that's due to the, uh, the broken family because fathers and mothers are not together being a good example of how to raise the children and show them how to deal with the issues of life. You got to, I, I, you know, I was thinking about this meeting today. I'm like, I got to warn the folks. Individually, you got to turn back to God so you can see how to deal with private issues. And then when you're out there in the public, you, you, you have the insight not to go along with the, with the conversation because they sound all really what, it, what, that, what they do is they sound very emotional and they put it well way that you will find yourself wanting to agree with it because they make it very, very emotional. And when you go with the emotions, you lose every time. There's not one time that you can go with emotions in life, whether it is a good feeling or a bad feeling, that you can go with emotion and win. You got to go with logic and wisdom, not emotions. Really, otherwise you'd be caught up with the world because they present emotions just like that. And they'll show you pictures of kids shot up. When we had to protest the other Sunday, uh, fighting for the Second Amendment, the other side who are against the Second Amendment, they have pictures of little children, 
They had somebody's shoes out there, a buttload, truckload of shoes that looked like kids' shoes and adult shoes. And if you were an emotion person, you'd be like, oh, yeah, we got to ban guns because you have identified emotionally. But that doesn't make sense to do that. 